How many of you guys have had the emotional roller coaster so far? You've been mad, you've been excited, you've been happy, you got pissed off, you're competitive, you're, you lost sleep, you're hungry, you got all kinds of stuff going on, right? Well, that's, that's WFG. And uh, if you're going to make any changes in the year 2020, I got a couple of comments I want to share with you of what's helped me in my business, but you have to be a new person when you leave this event. All right, so when everybody, all our friends and family members see us when we go back, they can't see the same person that attended this event, or else why would they do it? There's a lot of people that got workout plans, you know, New Year's resolutions, everybody wants to get in shape and lose weight and gain muscle or whatever they want to do, right? What if one of our friends goes on a workout plan and then 90 days later they look the exact same? <laughs> There's no motivation for me to go do that plan, does that make sense? So I realized I got to i got to change myself, they got to see me on fire, i got to walk faster, i got to talk faster. All the leaders all around the company, we're reinventing ourselves, and we're right back in the field, right across kitchen tables. I've been in the business 15 years, doing the same thing I did 15 years ago. Why? Because this is a new decade, this is a chance for us to change our life. And how much, I, I look at it like, how much of a shame would it be that this is the roaring 2000s right now? Interest rates are ridiculously low. The stock market is ridiculously high. Real estate is ridiculous. You couldn't find a better time to accumulate wealth. WFG is better than it's ever been. Ed Milet is branding our brand out there in the marketplace. So when you walk around, you used to have to say, you know, people would say, what company are you with? And you say, WFG. We used to have to throw our guard up a little bit. I don't know all the OGs remember that, right? But nowadays, they're like, WFG? So that's Ed Milet. Like, that's your leader? And I'm like, yeah, that's our leader. I'm like, I got him on my cell phone. He texted me yesterday, this and that. It's a whole new. Everything is new out there. You go on the internet now, we see positive stuff. Every, there's a WFG million dollar earner or financially independent leader in every community all across the United States. That's amazing, guys. So you gotta walk out with the best phone call in the You are the best company in the world. We're making a statement here. I, got, I heard Ed's back in the base shop business. Man, come on. If he's back doing it and he's coming up after me, that's an exciting time right now. We all gotta grind it out. So, uh, a little bit about myself, guys. I'm, I basically, I started in the company at 24 years old, all right? So I was young, I was not in the market, I didn't have a home, I lived at my dad's house, I didn't own a bank account, I had never filed a tax return a day in my life, I didn't have a suit, I didn't know how to tie a tie, nothing. So that, so when you invite that person to the meeting, you kind of hide them from everybody in the low zone because you don't want everybody to see that that's your guest, right? And everybody kept me in the room closet and brought me out right before the meeting and all that stuff, but I don't know what happened. When I seen that BPM presentation, I actually believed that I could do it. And I hope you guys, when you leave this event, you believe that you can do it. The only people that are crossing the stage that separates us from you is we know something that you don't know, but we've been doing it longer than you've been doing it. That's it. So if you learn what we learn, and then you do it the way we do it, you're going to have the same exact success. Goes back to the gym example. If you eat right and you exercise, you're going to get into shape. Everybody on planet Earth can get into shape if you do that. Most people don't do that, but it's a guarantee. The only variable is us. Does that make sense? WAP is a constant. You put in the numbers, the law of large numbers will help you become successful. We're in a casino called the Harris Resort Casino, right? How do the casinos win? The law of large numbers. So, and what's the, what's the old adage? The house always wins. Does that make sense? So what I realized was, if I could be short, I could be tall, I could be fat, I could be skinny, but if I run the numbers, the numbers can't beat me and I can't beat the numbers. So I'm a product of running the system, taking people, finding them, dealing with the rejection like Anna was talking about, bringing them into the company, and then if the, my motto was, tell me yes, tell me, uh, tell me yes, tell me no, but tell me fast, because I got to go. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to sit here and wait. You ever hear people say, I want to think about it? Like, I don't got time to think about it. Like, I got to move. Tell me yes, tell me no. Like, you're not going to affect my, my emotional stability. If the answer is no, just say no. How about this when we go back? We're all pumped up, we're excited, and then somebody says, yeah, I'll be there on Tuesday night, and they don't show up. You guys ever have that happen to you? I just don't, just tell me you're not going to come. Like, I don't understand <laughs> why people say they're going to do something and they don't do it. I was raised by a, 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 a traditionalist. My parents... So when you see, again, when you see people cross the stage, I don't want you to compare yourself to them because you don't know what they've been predisposed to before WFG that allowed them to have success possibly faster than you in WFG. You don't know what everybody's past was. And so as I look back at it, I, I wouldn't have changed my life because it prepped me to be the person I am today, but I was, WFG was kind of born, I feel like I was born to do this based on my life experiences. Okay, and so I was raised, my parents were born in 1938, and so they were in the 
the tradition of the generation. All right, so that's the greatest generation of Americans, by the way. In that generation, people went, they went to work for the same company for 30 years. The divorce rate was about 60% plus, right? People shook your hand, they looked you in the eyes, they told you what, what they were going to do, and they actually did it. Like, unlike anybody else today nowadays, you get what I'm saying? People just text message you and then don't even ever deal with you ever again, right? So, back in those days, mortgage documents were not this thing. You didn't need a notary and all that crazy stuff. You said, y'all yeah, pay it back, and they actually paid back their debts. So I was raised by that. So my dad was raised in the country in abject poverty. My dad had 11 brothers and sisters, and he said they only had four squares of toilet paper when they went to go use the bathroom. Just imagine that, right? Well, don't, don't imagine that. Right? So, so, they ate a lot of food in the South, right? They had four squares of toilet paper, right? California, we got the richest poor people in the world in California, don't we? We got color TV, we got iPhones, we got, you know, all this crazy stuff. But abject poverty, pre-civil rights movement, my dad went through all that stuff, and he moved, on, moved us to California because I'm biracial, so it was a little bit more liberal, and they could raise me in a better environment based on his experience. And my dad told me, like everybody else, go to school, get good grades, get a good job, all the stuff that he wanted a better life for us. Like a lot of our family, some of your family migrated here from another country. How many of you, your, your, your family came here from another country to raise you? Think about this though. 300 million people in the United States, 330 some odd million people. How many people on planet Earth? 6 billion plus? 7 billion, yeah. 7 billion. What are the chances are that you had a shot to be in the United States of America? It's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of 1%. And we're here. And then out of all the places we can be, we have the lineage of Charlier and Milet all the way up the ladder, and we're in the number one company in the world, in the biggest, best financial services company in the world, in the United States. You guys realize how lucky we are, how privileged we are, how blessed we are? We're all To our dreams and our feet to our blessings, and we took action on the blessings that we had. There are some people in other countries that wish they had the opportunity that we have. They're you know running from dogs, they're 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 going walking through deserts, they're jumping fences to get this to come to the land of opportunity, and some of us don't even capitalize on it. I recommend that we push reset and we go and capitalize on this thing. All we gotta do is deal with the word no. The shortest word, one of the shortest words in the English dictionary is the biggest thing that holds us back from success. Isn't that something? So I'm going to be one day sitting with my grandkids on my lap, and you know what they're going to ask us? So you grew up in the golden era, in the roaring 2000s, where all these billionaires popped out, and everybody became wealthy, and everybody accumulated success, and all these podcasts, and you knew Ed Milet, and you knew Charlie A, and you knew Schleiman, and you knew Rich Dolly. So Dad, why do we live like this? Why do we live in an apartment? When all these people that were in the same company that you're in accumulated massive amounts of wealth, isn't that a nightmare? That I would rather go deal with the nose than to try to change the subject when my grandkids ask me that question. And that's what we're all going to be faced with. When I joined, WFG was not known as the powerhouse company that it is today. And guess what? Everybody, but we're still here, okay? And everywhere we go, if you've ever seen cockroaches, you know, you turn on the lights and the cockroaches just disappear, right? <laughs> That's what it's like when we walk through places now because we see all the WFG dropouts everywhere that quit, that told us it was a pyramid because they were too much of a pansy to stick it out. We stuck it out. Right now. So they're waiting on me to 
quit. See, think about this. If I become successful in their mind, they were wrong. <coughs> Do you think our friends and family want to be wrong? They want to say, I told you so. So if you become successful, then what? They're wrong. But if you quit, I told you so. So they were waiting on me to quit. They were waiting on me to give up. And all of a sudden, I realized, by telling me that you think that this is a scam, you guys heard that before, right? It's still out there, pyramid, all this crazy stuff, which I don't even know what that is still to this day, because the people that say that don't even know what that is. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, right? You just got to, like, take a deep breath, look at them, ask them questions, smile, you know? Uh, and I feel like they're launching on when people say that because they just don't know what they're saying. And, and I look at it and I'm like, okay, so you're insulting my integrity and you're insulting my intelligence by telling me that. See, I didn't feel sad. I got mad when they said that. I put a chip on my shoulder and I started playing this game with aggression. What do I mean by that? If you think, you know me. Matter of fact, you know my family. You know where I come from. You know all these things about me. As a matter of fact, you owe me money. And, and I'm trying to scam you. You know what I'm so you're insulting my integrity. Man, when, we, when you were hungry, I gave you half of my sandwich. When you were thirsty, I gave you half of my drink. And now I'm trying to bring you to this business, and now you're telling me that I'm going to rip you off? That pissed me off. It didn't make me want to quit. It made me want to work harder to prove them wrong. Yeah. That's how you got to work. That's how you got to operate this business. So many people are going to be so worried about what everybody thinks about us, but those people are not paying your bills. They're not feeding your family. As long as what you know in your heart of hearts, what you're doing is right, who cares about what anybody thinks about you? You guys, did you guys realize that you're, you got, we're salespeople, all right? Did you know salespeople make the world go round? Nobody else would have a job if it wasn't for a salesperson. Did you realize that? The home office would not have a job if it wasn't for you going out there taking rejection. We are the ones that go out there and are willing to take the no's so that we don't have to tell no to our family. I'm going to go take the nose. My family's never going to have to deal with the nose. What about, what about the people that design the websites? They wouldn't have a job if you weren't willing to go take the nose. You should be proud of what you do, right? The, 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 the people that put the, the, the software together for the illustration packages for your insurance policies would not have a job if it wasn't for you willing to go take rejection. What about the nurse that does the phlebotomy that does the medical exam? They don't want to take rejection. They've got a job and feed their family because you're willing to go out there and take rejection. You know what I'm saying? Don't you let everybody ever make you feel like you're less than because it's a sale and it's a commission. You tell them you wouldn't even have a job if it wasn't for a salesman. <laughs> Let's go talk to our market. Let's go talk to 
to the person next door. We don't even know our neighbors anymore. So anyway, me and Clarence, we get in his golf, we go into the golf course, and we get golf balls, shine them up, found them all in the lake, we make a little raft, and then we go into the clubhouse and find out how much they cost, and we had a little sign, nine, ten years old, and we found out, and we made sure that our top flights, our titles, everything was cheaper than what they sold it in the clubhouse. And so we come home with $20 in our pocket, $30 in our pocket at nine years old. I didn't realize at the time, we were already entrepreneurs. You know what I'm saying? We were already learning how to solve a problem for people had a profit. Then I got a paper route. Anybody ever have a paper route before? Why did I like a paper route? Because I don't have a boss breathing down my neck. I get on my bike, take off, do whatever I want to do, forge the papers, handle my business, and then get a paycheck and I had a job. Right? And then I started to realize I didn't like this, but remember when we got, everybody remember your very first job? I remember my first job. It was a Saturday. I rolled up the, uh, I was an automotive mechanic. You know why I was an automotive mechanic? Because all my, a lot of people at our school, when they turned 16, they got cars. But we had this old broke down car in the front yard with wash nests in there and spider webs in there. And my dad said, you want a car? There it is right there. This is very hard to take the bus, the guy is. And uh, he said, we're going to put a motor in here and we're going to learn. You're, you're going to build it yourself and then that's going to be your car. And I had to learn how to become a mechanic out of necessity so I could have a car. And I remember I got my first job as a mechanic. It was, uh, I was 15 years old. And I'm rolling up the shop. And I remember it was like it was yesterday, but this was the day that I said, I'm about to start looking for something different. Because I just followed the path that everybody else went down. Go to school, get good grades, get a good job. Remember how our parents used to tell us, if everybody jumps off a cliff, are you going to go jump off a cliff too? But then they tell us to go get a job because everybody else is getting the job too. We have a whole lot of a little bit of conflict here, right? So 9 o'clock comes, I bring in the car. I remember I take off the tires, jack it up, I put them on the balancing rack, I balance the tires, go into inventory, take the rinse down, do all this stuff. You know, you got sweat pouring down the side of your face, you got oily hands, and so you rub your face like this, nobody tells you, but you got oil coming down the side of your face the whole day. You got your back brace on because you're lifting heavy objects. And then you're like, the whole, it feel like the whole day went by. You know, you're like, man, I'm tired. You look up and it's 9.05. <laughs> I'm like, I'm 15 years old. How many more years do I got to deal and endure this? Till I get to retirement age. 50 years? I can't even last five minutes of this day. I'm already about to quit. And then, I remember a year goes by, he said, I'm going to give you a raise from $5.50 an hour to $7.50 an hour if, you, if you're here for a year. So a year goes by, I talked to Pat, I said, okay, so I'm ready, I'm ready. And he's, I'm, we're ready for what? I said, I'm ready for my raise, $7.50 an hour. He said, why should I give you a raise? I said, because you told me you were going to give me a raise. And so he gives me a raise, and I quit the next day. Why? Because it reminded me of asking my dad for money again. I got another dad now, but now I got to call him boss for the rest of my life. Boss is double SOB spelled backwards. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, if they had these policies before, I'm selling them to everybody. 
You get what I'm saying? Like, we got to go take a crusade out there to these streets. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. They got to see a look in your face that you're a man or a woman on a mission. You believe in what you do. My home used to say, people don't need to believe in what you say. They just need to know that you believe in what you say. That's all you got to worry about. When it, that, that, there's a uh, quote, when a convinced person speaks, they're convincing. You don't got to worry about convincing other people. Worry about convincing yourself. That was the day I became an entrepreneur. I'm not working for anybody else. So I became a hustler, did all this kind of stuff, worked on cars, draw. I, I could draw. I did, you know, my first speech, believe it or not, I remember in WFG, my first speech was like this. I had the mic. <laughs> I walked around the whole place. I walked around like this. And then Rob Day was my upline. Rob Day was the back leg. Back and forth, being told what to do, worried 
worried about the economy and economic layoffs and stuff like that. Think about that. Charlie Day the same thing. In a couple of months, they may go on. And we're telling you that the system is to go to get a job and not do WFG. You can take 50 years off of your life and shrink it down into five years. And then live your life on your own time the rest of your life. You can take 30 years and shrink it down into three years. As I think about that, it pisses me off that they used my dad to build that company to have success. And then when he was older in his 70s, you're now overpaid because now they can get two college kids for the price of one. So why would they have you, why would they want an old man at a job now? Two college kids graduate, they just want to tell their mom they got a job. They'll pay them 30 grand a year, 30 grand a year, they're able-bodied, and then they force my dad to retire. And I'm like, man, that's, that's how they do it after 30 years. And I said, that's not going to be me. You know what, my dad got us to the middle class, I'm going to take our family to the upper class and to the world class. Some of your family got you here to this country. It's our job to use this platform to get our family to the next level. So thank goodness. <laughs> I invited a bunch of people, 
Nobody showed up, but guess what? Enough of them did show up. All, I heard Art Williams say, all you can do is all you can do, but all you can do is enough. And only you know if what you're doing is all you can do. When you come home at night, did I do all I can do? And you know what ends up happening when you, when you feel like you're doing all you can do? You feel like you deserve to win. And nobody else is better than you. When you show up earlier, when you leave later, all the little simple stuff, reading the business plan, reading your books. When you don't want to read and you don't like to read, you read anyway. When everybody else is having fun, you're role-playing the presentation, practicing overcoming objections. So when I get an objection and I close, or when I get on stage and I know what I'm saying, I got 10,000 hours invested into this. Outlier. This is not an overnight success like Hannah said. 10,000 hours, I'm walking around my house talking to myself, overcoming objections, learning what to say. I get everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I heard in the CD, I think it was Ed, crazy people rule the world. We're not the crazy ones. They told me weird equals rich, cool equals broke. So I'm going to be the weird one. I remember up here in the scripting CD from Ed Milet. Did you stop the tape? Remember on that script, the old school? I was actually in my car stopping the tape, role playing with Ed Milet. Because I knew one day I'm going to get a chance to meet him, and I want him to be proud that I actually did what he told me to do. And nobody does it. But you are. You're going to be the one. It doesn't matter what somebody next to you does. It doesn't even matter what your team does. It doesn't even matter what your kids do. It doesn't matter what your spouse does. You do it. You're the leader. Let me get to my talk. My time's over. I got a little excited right there. <laughs>
right? And you go out into that wilderness, and when you come back with an app, that's what you come back with. How many calls you got to make until somebody says yes? How many people do I got to prospect until you find who you're looking for? Well, this guy only had to get five members a day. Well, you might have to get seven. If you go to, a, if you go to the gym, you can't lift the same amount of weights as everybody else. You got to lift until you can't lift anymore, whatever that is for you. So until I make money, you know, there's a lot of people say, I've been here for five years. You know what? You've been here for one year, repeated five times over again. <laughs> five year people, they're financially independent after five years. Next, employees, they want short term security. Entrepreneurs sacrifice short term security for what? Long term security. Because I heard a long time ago, you're going to be older a lot longer than you're going to be younger. So why not sacrifice your younger years so you set up those older years forever? Ever heard anybody say, I can't join the business because I get a paycheck right now? Like, I kind of got to get a paycheck right now? Fifteen years later, my friends say the exact same thing. I can't do WFG, I still need a paycheck right now. I'm like, man, what, why do you want to live a life where you need that paycheck to come in on Friday? How awesome would it be, guys, to have, a, to have so much money saved you don't need a paycheck for another five years and you're settled? How would you wake up in the morning? Would you be stressed out when the bills come in and you've got enough money saved for the next five years? What about for the next 50 years? What about for not only your whole lifetime, your kids' whole lifetime, you have enough money saved? Can you breathe? Can you get out of the matrix? Can you wake up out of the rat race, actually start to think and stop being distracted and start to focus on what's important in life, which is the way to take advantage of our friends and family? You got to get out of that system. And all my friends, man, I need a paycheck right now. I'm like, get out of that mentality. I said, that's a normal thing to do. Next, employees want benefits. Entrepreneurs want what? Ownership. I want to own this. If I want to live in a home for 30 years, please make sure I own this home and I can live, leave it to the next generation after 30 years. Is that, that's common sense to everybody, right? Well, what if I work at a job for 30 years? Please make sure at the end of 30 years I own this and I can leave this for generations to come. Why do we own a house but then we rent our income? That's what makes you middle class. The biggest investment you will ever make in your life is your ability to earn income, not your house. It's your ability, it's the way you invest into earning an income. And an hourly and salary is the worst investment you can possibly make because, because you're always going to get paid less for the return than your work. There was a gentleman, they interviewed him, they, he was one of the first couple of employees of IBM, and they said, man, how can you quit? They had, they had the picture of him, and he was there, and, and he was no longer in the company, he was working at a job. And they said, man, at the time, they were only offering the uh, original uh, stock options of IBM, they weren't giving benefits, so I had to quit. Think about if you had the original stock options of IBM. He'd be a billionaire. But he had to go get, you know, go get his coat pays done, get his teeth and his vision clean and all that stuff. And, and he sacrificed ownership for that. Go make 500 grand a year. Go make 1.5 million. You can clean your own teeth and pay your own health insurance premiums. We'll be okay. <laughs> yes, it's expensive, but it's not that expensive when you're making a million bucks a year. When you're making 700,000 a year, when you're making 500,000, I would take that any day over just the fear. And plus, the benefits don't even send you to Stanford anyway. They send you to their doctor, and then you go to their doctor, and their doctor says, you're all right, get back to work. <laughs> Employees, they want to be comfortable. Entrepreneurs, we like being uncomfortable. I don't know, there's something crazy about being uncomfortable when that's when you grow. When you sit there and watch TV and eat chicken wings, you ain't getting into shape. But when you're sweating and you're hurting and it doesn't feel that good, you know something good is going around. When you're taking rejection, you're doing the work of a champion. If you look, most people in our teams, they're, you know what their, their uh, why is? How much rejection can I avoid today? Can I avoid the word no as much as possible? So I'll make no calls. I won't talk to anybody. And that's their why. So their why is to be comfortable. Their why is not to be financially independent. When you get financially independent, you're going to have the ultimate level of comfort. So how do we learn how to speak like that? Our associations. Who are our kids hanging around? Are we speaking the language of hourly salary, resume, go put, go put, uh, negotiate for a salary? Are we talking about ownership? Take a risk. Believe in yourself. Fail forward. Make mistakes. Or do we criticize people who make mistakes? You can't do that. Next. Employees are work processors. Entrepreneurs are work creators. When you go to work, guess what? Everything's there for you to do. We're fired up after well pole. You go to the office on Monday, there's nothing for you to do. <laughs> Who has to create it? you got to create it. you got to create this storm that gets you so busy, you're dizzy, and you got to be so busy that you can't follow up with everything. And you got to drop the ball a few times. there got to be a couple of people that are a little bit mad at you 
we didn't return their call. That's okay. They need protection anyway. We're just trying to go save the world, right? So you gotta go create this yourself. But once you create it, look at this. This is a vision that Dan had a long time ago to build something like this. And in your mind, when you close your eyes, you can still see your vision, am I right? You don't even have to have eyes. Helen Keller said, not everybody who has sight has vision. You guys know who Helen Keller was. So you don't have to have sight to have vision. You can see when you close your eyes, when you're going to sleep at night, when you read your business plan, you gotta incorporate all your senses and start to believe it. Next. The employee operates through tasks. What do I got to do? What do I got to do? The entrepreneur operates in your vision. Somebody in here, you got to make 762 calls, and then you find a Dan Charlotte. How many Dan's do you need to have on your team for you to be financially independent? One. And then a thousand people come. You get what I'm saying? Some of you got to make 762 calls, and then you found your Dan Charlotte. Head. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. yeah. Some of you got to make 1,055 calls. And then you find a Paul Hart or a Eric Olson. So what does that mean? That means every call is productive. It, it just hurry up and go through the calls. If I'm going to make 762 calls, tell me yes, tell me no, but tell me that i got to go to number two, and i got to go to number three, and I'm going to keep doing these calls. See, what I thought about, I actually believe that. And I thought that everything that's keeping me away from making these calls is wasting my time. Going to job is keeping me away from making my 762 contacts. Partying on the weekends is keeping me away from my 762 contacts. Playing video games is keeping me away. So I went all in, all up front in WFG, made the phone calls, and we collapsed those time frames. Everybody here has a magic number. I don't know if it's 762. What if it's 5,476? You're guaranteed to be financially independent. All you got to do is go through the 5,476. You got you a lottery ticket, and you got to cash that after you get those numbers. You guys get that? Yeah. Next. Entrepreneurs operate through, excuse me, employees operate through excuses. Entrepreneurs operate through reasons. Right? We have to dig deep and find our reasons. I got an SMB who's a single mother. Her husband died in a plane crash, single mother of five kids. Most people would say, I can't do WFG because I'm a single mother of five kids. That was the reason she did do WFG. Isn't it? How many of you have teammates that didn't come to wealth besides us and all of us, right? Isn't the reason that they said they couldn't come the exact reason why they should be here? It's always time or money. So they say, I, I don't have time, so I can't go. You're working, and that's the reason you're supposed to go. So you can get overrides, you can get your life back, and have all the time that you want. Oh, I don't have any money, so I can't go. That's the reason you should come, not the excuse of why you shouldn't come. Or here, or check this out. People say, I don't, I don't know much about finance, so that's not my business. I, 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 it's not something for me. You ever heard that before? I don't know anything about finance. Do you use money? Yeah. How many people on planet Earth use money? How long are you going to use money? Forever. So that's the reason you should do this business. Does that make sense? That's not the reason you should. If you don't have a financial education, that's why you should do it. So we've got to start to operate through reasons. This is hard. That's the reason to do it, because your kids are watching. You know what I'm saying? This is a challenge. But we're going to show them. That's the reason I am going to do this, because I'm going to prove to my kids that quitters never win and winners never quit. And you plow through adversity. Even if I don't like it, I don't like recruiting. Well, then what if my son doesn't like science? Should I tell him, Daddy doesn't like recruiting, so I just don't do it? So you don't like science? Don't go to school. <laughs> no, you've got to do what you want. Even if you don't want to do it, you still got to do it. And i got to set that example. Next, employees wait for training. Entrepreneurs seek out the resources. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever heard say that? My leader doesn't train me. Guys, we got podcasts, we got Google, we got the crystal ball called Google. You just rub it, push it in, and it pops up the answer to you. So if we don't know the answer, our ancestors will be rolling over in their grave right now thinking about how you guys say you don't know anything. You used to have to go to a library, climb to the top, blow the dust off, find the bibliography, go to the paper, and then get the answer. Now you guys say it's a high speed internet in your pocket, all you gotta do is Google stuff, and we say we don't know. And our ancestors will be rolling over in their grave like pissed off at us, you know? <laughs> Don't wait for training. Go seek out the resources. Drive where you gotta go drive. Get what you gotta go. Don't wait for somebody to come to your house, knock on your door, and serve this up to you on a silver platter. That's what a lot of people do. So I'm, I'm finishing up here. Employees are politically correct. Entrepreneurs push the envelope. When you were a child and you wanted that cookie, how many times did you ask for that cookie until you wore your mother down and got the cookie? But now we're worried about, am I being too pushy? Am I, should I call them again? Maybe they think I'm trying to make money online. 
don't know if I want to call them. But when you were a kid, it was like you wore them down. But you know what ended up happening? Your mom said, after a while, don't touch that. Don't go there. Don't say nothing. Don't ask for anything. Just sit there. Be quiet. Don't touch nothing. And they've been telling you that for all these years. And now you're a grown-up. Like, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm not going to talk to anybody. <laughs> Until they say no. Just go, go, go. You gotta bring that childlike enthusiasm back out of your life. There was a closer inside of all of us when we were young, and we just wore them out with enthusiasm, is how we wore them out. We gotta bring that back out. And as I wind down here, as I wind down here, employees need to know everything before they act. I got a few more, but that'll be for the next one, Paul. You guys invite me again. Employees need to know everything before they act. Entrepreneurs act before they know everything. How do you know how to raise kids? You have kids. There ain't no book you're going to read that's going to teach you how to raise kids. When you, one has the flu, the other one doesn't have the flu, you try to quarantine them because you don't want them both to get sick at the same time, you lost sleep, you got to charge back. That's not in the book or read that you're going to read about how to raise kids. None of that's in that book. How do you know how to be a good husband? You get married. And you screw it up a few times. You make a few mistakes. You stick it out for the long haul. And then you learn how to do it. Does that make sense? How do you learn how to do it with WFG? You have a few people say you're not good enough. I want to be on so-and-so's team. I want to work with so-and-so. And then you keep doing it anyway, and you learn as you go. Guys, we got a mission that we have to go take to the people out there. This mindset, the mission is not, the competition is not inside WFG. It's not Merrill Lynch and Charles Schwab. It's the darn middle class mindset. It's the reason people aren't joining. When their brain is programmed to live paycheck to paycheck, and you're showing them a million dollar opportunity, that's why they don't notice it. Because their mind is only noticing paycheck to paycheck opportunities. It's not your presentation. It's not you. You just got to go talk to more people. We got to say less to more people and then move on to the next person. Instead of saying more to the same person. <laughs> you just keep in mind that they're not coming. Let's go find somebody else. There are people like me everywhere out there, guys. You can go find them. You can find them right here. You can find them everywhere. Just, you just got to believe. This isn't a business where you see it and you believe it. This is a business where you believe it and then you see it. So as we leave here, we're different people. We're a changed person. We're a changed woman. You're a changed mother. You're a changed father. You're a changed leader. You're reinventing yourself. And as we go into the marketplace, we're going to represent WFG the right way, with professionalism, with courage. And we're going to go uh, take back America and let's go set these captives free. Is that good? Yeah.